Thank you, Michael. Whew. Let's give him another hand, shall we? Well, welcome, everybody. My name is Reverend Alice Reed, and I'm so happy to be with you here this morning. I'm really excited as July is coming to a close and we begin to uh, move towards August. We have a wonderful event here on Friday night. I hope you'll join us. Our very own creative arts minister and associate minister, Reverend Karen Allen, has put together a wonderful showcase of talent. South Orange County's Got Talent, and I hope that you'll join us. It's Friday at, at uh, 7 p.m., that's the 4th, and it's a great opportunity for us to really uh, love each other up, right? Love each other up. See the talent that's out there. People get an opportunity to, to share their gifts, and we get an opportunity to receive them. So I hope you'll join us for that. Um, the, when I think about that event, I think about how perfectly it demonstrates this idea of living out loud. And that's what we're talking about all 2023. We're looking at this opportunity for us to really stand up in our own person, in our own power, and to live out loud. Whew. And we've been talking about a lot of great ways for us to do that. And this month, we're looking at this topic of speaking truth to circumstance. And we've looked at our fears, We've looked at the ways that we can empower ourselves and wake up and begin to recognize the, the power that we have within us that is God-ordained. And today, we're going to be looking at standing stones, the standing stones. And that might not resonate with any of you. It didn't necessarily <laughs> resonate with me. Like, what's that about? But what I think when you think about um, standing stones, they're things that stand up and are impenetrable. And in our topic today, they really represent those things that get in our way, where life feels like it's come to a standstill and we can't move any further, where we get stuck in a situation or a circumstance. And as we talk about this topic of speaking truth to circumstance, the way that we, in this particular philosophy, speak truth to circumstance, anybody know? Prayer. We speak truth to circumstance with prayer. And we have a scientific method of prayer that we use. We refer to it as affirmative prayer. We often uh, refer to it as spiritual mind treatment. And I want to share this quote by our founder, Ernest Holmes. And he writes, to assert our individuality is to rise above the law of averages that into that more highly specialized use of the law, which brings freedom rather than bondage, joy in the place of grief, and wholeness instead of sickness. We cannot do this unless we first are willing to judge not according to appearances. In this judging not according to appearances, we are impressing the law with a new idea of ourselves, a less limited idea. And we are learning to think independently of any existing circumstance. And this is what is meant by entering the absolute. So if you've been around for a while and you've heard some of, uh, read some of Ernest Holmes and you've heard us talk about various things, you might have heard us refer to the absolute. The absolute is really that place where God exists ever-present, always, undeniable, completely in existence and available to us. It is absolute. And yet sometimes we get really attached to our ideas. We get, we get sort of stuck in a rut or something that ex we're experiencing. We begin to uh, think of it as impenetrable, like those standing stones. Ernest Holmes said that spirit is forever taking form and forever deserting the form which it has taken. But we forget that. We forget that change is constant, that it is forever uh, moving with spirit, that the experience that we have in the world, in this material world that feels so tangible, is impermanent. 
It is impermanent. That's what the Buddhists call it. Or just to put it really simply, this too shall pass. It always does. Things move into form. They move out the form. It's a graceful dance that we have with spirit. The scientists talk about, um, and in quantum phys physics, that energy never is destroyed. It simply change, changes form. You think about uh, water that turns into ice and then melts back into water and then turns into vapor and then turns back into water. Well, that is the way our spirits move through this universe that we are living in. We are forever moving in this fluid motion with spirit, this dance with, of life. And yet we get so caught up with current events. I, I don't know if this happens to you. It's happened to me a, a handful of times where I find myself passionately concerned about something. You know, some might call it complaining. <laughs> And I'm, and I'm just, I'm on this rag about something and I'm, and I'm talking to a friend and I'm waiting for them to jump on the bandwagon with me and they look at me with peace and calm and say, well, what do you think you can do to change that? <laughs> what? <laughs> you mean I have some agency here? We do. We do have agency in the ex things that we experience with our life. Um... I was looking in the dictionary and the word circumstance actually means that which is standing around us. That which is standing around us. Circumstances are simply those things that we let into our lives to infiltrate our experience. And so when we want to shift that, when we want to uh, move that, you know, there's some, there's some strategies that we can use. I'm reminded of this little meme that was going around uh, social media a couple of years ago where Bob Newhart was meeting with a patient and the patient comes in and he assures her that he can help her in five minutes or less. And so she begins to lament about the issues that she's having and he listens for about 30 seconds and then he looks at her square in the eye and says, stop it, <laughs> just stop it. <laughs> now. If you're going to therapy, you might need a little more help than that. <laughs> you might want a little more compassion. You might want a little more understanding. But I, I love that meme for me because when I start spinning in my head about things or if I start you know, getting caught up in some negative talk, I just remember Bob Newhart sitting there and saying, stop it, just stop it. <laughs> and there have been times when I've actually said it out loud to myself to try to break that habit of habitual thinking, unconscious thinking that comes up for us when we begin to, you know, there's whew, the subconscious. Man, it's huge. And it is this container for everything that you've ever experienced, everything that's ever been told to you, everything that's ever been fed to you through movies or media or your parents or your school. The subconscious holds it all. And so it's my work and your work, I invite you to do the same thing, to cultivate your consciousness. And one of the ways that we con um, cultivate our consciousness is by paying attention to our thoughts. Uh, there's a great little pamphlet by the metaphysician er Emmett Fox called The Golden Key. Anybody familiar with it? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he writes in there that we should stop thinking about the difficulty, whatever it is, and think about God instead. And he goes on to write that scientific prayer will enable you to get yourself or anyone else out of any difficulty. It is the golden key to harmony and happiness. And so in this philosophy, we practice a way of thinking about God instead of the difficulty, and it's referred to as spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. And it is this practice of commingling science and mysticism so that they come together to give us an experience that is, helps us to alter our consciousness, to alter that mixed bag of subconscious that we're carrying around. I think of our form of prayer as alchemy. Think about it. You work with 
your subconscious, you work with all these things that feel out of your control, you've got something happening to you outside of your life that feels out of control, you think about God, you do some deep prayer work, and things shift. The very definition of alchemy is a seemingly magic process of transformation and or creation. Does that describe our form of prayer? Yeah, yeah, it really does. Now, you might have a relationship with prayer before coming to Centers for Spiritual Living and learning about how we use affirmative prayer. You might have a relationship where prayer was this thing that you did, you went, and just maybe that sky god, that entity outside of yourself might find and feel some compassion and benevolence, and maybe if you're lucky, your prayers will be answered. Yeah. There's some people who walk around with a relationship with prayer like that. And it's a very unhealthy, codependent relationship, if you ask me. <laughs> but our relationship with prayer is that it is a, we give voice to the holiness within us. And we allow it to be expressed. And when we aren't able to find the words, we, walk, we work with a prayer practitioner. We work with someone who knows the words, knows how to drop into that way of being, that way of seeing and understanding the world, and as Emmett talked about, pull away from the difficulty and just think about God. And we, just, we know God to be inherent in everything we experience. And so sometimes when we have those unlovely experiences, it's really hard to see the God in it. I, I'm right with you. Like, you know, when there is some terrible disaster happening, uh, the, my first, you know, not my first thought, but I drop into those places of, you know, how could this be for us? How could this be happening? But I find, as I remember that everything is impermanent, that time has a way of moving and shifting and changing, that whatever it is that has got me upset, it will indeed pass. But it takes practice to be begin to shift our consciousness into that new way of thinking, that new way of being. When I first started coming to Centers for Spiritual Living, it was, uh, it was right after the 9-11 incident. I was, I was floored by that. I was absolutely floored by that. And my mother had been telling me about this this center, that spiritual center she had been going to. And so I, I walked through the doors and I, I picked it up right away. And within the first year, we had a program where people were, um, uh, for, that was supposed to last for six weeks, where you met with a group once a week. And um, our group met and, and we were to pray together. And our group met and we continued to meet weekly for five years. And the people in that group prayed every week. It was a beautiful process. We would come together. We would, you know, share a little snack. We would uh, uh, go into a prayer place, basically silence, and then each one of us would pray spontaneously. And, um, and it really changed my life by practicing this thing called spiritual mind treatment on a regular basis. I began to see great shifts in my life. And yet, if we don't trust prayer, if we don't have that relationship with it, if we haven't tried it, we don't understand that it's more than just crying out into the vast nothingness and, and, and asking and beseeching to some, something outside of us. Ernest Holmes says this about prayer, and um, it's, a powerful, it's a powerful reading. And it's in his book, the design, A New Design for Living. He writes, creative prayer is intelligent knowing coupled with emotional conviction. Many prayers have been fully and completely answered for people who might be said to be unlettered, who knew nothing about science or philosophy or dogmatic religion. They just knew God is. They just knew prayer always had an answer and it always did. But those of us who have started to toy with ideas, who raise questions, 
which we're not always able to answer, we are the ones who have to pull ourselves together, round up those loose ends of thought, organize what it is we believe and why we believe it, and then proceed to lift ourselves up to a logical, consistent level of belief and conviction. He goes on to say we have to re-educate ourselves to discover within ourselves the knowledge that this is God's world we're living in, that it is good, that we're part of it, and that the answer to every prayer is inside the prayer, and that every thought we have is creative in that it is both cause and effect. Now, that doesn't describe any kind of prayer I knew about before I came to New Thought. It describes an interactive, intimate relationship with the divine and an opportunity for me to use my marvelous mind to explore it, to see those things that I believe and to begin to question why I believe what I believe and to begin to work with and cultivate my beliefs so that they were more um, uplifting. And, and what I can tell you is that practice changed my life. And I'm pretty sure it's changed the life of a lot of people in this room. Affirmative prayer works. It works because we engage it. It works because we invoke our beliefs and that we know, we know without a shadow of a doubt. Doubts will come and doubts will go, but we know at the end of the day that it's all God that God is in us and around us and it's in every person we meet and it's in every circumstance. And our work is to look at the circumstances of our life and decide whether these are things we want to continue to create, to promote, to cultivate, or are these things we want to change. And so I'm going to leave you with a really powerful poem by Regina Sarah Ryan from her book, Praying Dangerously. And it's a poem by the same name. Deliver us, O God, O truth, O love, from quiet prayer, from polite and politically correct language, from appropriate gesture and form, and whatever else we think we must put forth to invoke or praise you. Let us instead pray dangerously wantingly, lustily, passionately. Let us demand with every ounce of our strength. Let us storm the gates of heaven. Let us shake up ourselves and our plastered saints from the sleep of years. Let us pray dangerously. Let us throw ourselves from the top of the tower. Let us risk a descent of the darkest region of the abyss. Let us put our head into the lion's mouth and direct our feet to the entrance of the dragon's cave. Let us pray dangerously. Let us not hold back a little portion, dealing out our lives, our precious minutes, and our energies like some efficient accountant. Let us rather pray dangerously, unsafe, prolific, wasteful. Let us ask for nothing less than the infinite to ravage us. Let us ask nothing less than annihilation in the fires of love. Let us not pray in holy half measures nor walk the middle path for too long, but pray madly, foolishly. Let us be too ecstatic. Let us be too overwhelmed with sorrow and remorse. Let us be undone and dismembered and gladly left to our own devices. Ah, what structures of deceit we have created. What battlements erected, what labyrinths woven, what traps set for ourselves and then fallen into. Enough. Let us pray dangerously. Hot prayer, wet prayer, fierce prayer, fiery prayer, improper prayer, exuberant prayer, drunken and completely unrealistic prayer. <laughs> <sighs> Let us say yes again and again and again and yes some more. Let us pray dangerously. The most dangerous prayer is yes. Thank you very much.
Can I, I want to invite the, in, in lieu of the closing prayer that I usually do, I want to invite the practitioners and the ministers to come forward and to circle the, the platform here. And we are going to offer you a prayer wall. We are going to offer you the opportunity to experience spiritual mind treatment. We are going to invite you to come up and to receive prayer from any one of these practitioners to come up and pray dangerously, to come up and have the experience of prayer yourself. And so I, I encourage you not to be shy. I encourage you to be, maybe there's something that's wonderful that's happening in your life and you want more of it. Come up and receive a prayer from one of these practitioners. Maybe there's something in your life that's been too burdensome, too hard for you to carry. Come up and receive prayer from one of these practitioners. We, it is our honor to pray with you. Pray with you. Let us begin. Tell me what you'd like. I'd like my relationship to Absolutely. So I know in this moment that the power in the presence, which is love, the power in the presence, which is love. The power in the presence.
can sit down. You can sit down. You can sit down. You can sit down. As our prayers wrap up, as a representative of your ecclesiastical team, I want to thank you, each and every one of you who came up for prayer. I want you to know that you gave us a greater gift than we could ever give you. So thank you for letting us pray with you today.